Halloween. I must confess, I am very sad. Because I've been telling you the fuel cells are quite efficient systems, but I found out that they are not so efficient as I thought. So in this presentation, we're going to have a look at which are these causes for this drop in efficiency of fuel cells. But don't panic, because fuel cells are still very efficient compared to other uh, conversion systems. Well, as you might know, electrical power will depend on two main variables. Uh, electrical voltage, potential, and the intensity, which is the current density, basically. So, voltage will depend on thermodynamic variables, will basically depend on the energy that a system contains, while the intensity will be depending on the amount of charge that will be flowing through our system, which means that we will, that will be depending on the amount of fuel that we consume. So this is a non-extensive variable, while intensity will be an extensive variable, depending on the amount of fuel that we're using. So, fuel cells work at uh, their best efficiency, at the maximum efficiency, in an open circuit. I mean, when there's no um, flow of electrons at all. In this case, when the intensity is zero, then we have the maximum potential of voltage, which is the reversible potential. This is the potential that you can read in any book of electrochemistry or any table. But life's hard, and this is completely useless if what we want to obtain, indeed, is a flow of electrons, which is electrical energy. So, when we close the system, and we allow some electrons to flow through it, then the intensity will be more than zero, but there is a drop in the voltage, respect to the reversible voltage. So it means that our fuel cell will work with less efficiency than the best of the cases, which again is the reversible or open circuit efficiency. Um, then, well, this is why well, this happens because voltage and current are related. The same way that it's related by a resistance uh, in a very simple circuit, as you can see here. In a fuel cell, we also will also have uh, a relation between the cell voltage that we have and the current density, that, or what is the flow of electrons or the amount of um, electrical or electricity flow that we have in, in the system. Um, indeed, if you have a look at this um, curve, which is called polarization curve, um, what we have is at the moment that the current density starts increasing, it means at the moment that intensity is not zero and we have having some flow of electrons, then the potential starts to fall, it means the voltage starts to fall, and we have less voltage available for our applications. This is always happening I mean, the real potential, which will be the one reading this table, mm, for a certain current density, will be always less than the reversible potential, which is the maximum efficiency potential. So, as you see, polarization curves are the tools that we have to know where we are in terms of efficiency, in terms of, okay, I have this um, system working with this uh, intensity, Let's, let's see which is the um, voltage that I'm going to have. Huh? So these are the working conditions. And the net electrical power, which is the power that I'm going to have for my own application, is uh, the product between intensity and the voltage. Mm? But this voltage, not this one, which is the reversible. Forget about this one, because you're never going to have this. It's so sad, but it's, it's true. So... How can we measure this efficiency loss? Well, the first efficiency loss that we have, uh, that we've mentioned in our presentation, is a reversible efficiency. And it's based on the fact that not all the chemical energy can be used in our application. Indeed, only, only the energy which will be represented by the free energy or Gibbs energy will be available in your fuel cell. And this will happen for all the systems, and it doesn't depend on which is the temperature or the pressure of your operation. This is a thermodynamic restriction. Don't forget, though, 
that this efficiency will be very, very high compared to other efficiencies like the Carnot cycles efficiency, which will be available to uh, thermal engines. Uh, so this is still a very good, good system. So apart from this thermodynamic restriction, we will have to deal with losses of intensity and losses of voltage. Yeah. So we could define two variables, which would be the efficiency in terms of intensity and the voltage intensity, which will be mm, somehow plot by um, a loss in the intensity and the voltage. So at, in the end of the day, the efficiency, the final efficiency of your fuel cell will be a product of the different efficiencies, the reversible efficiency, which is thermodynamics, and, the, and then the intensity and the voltage efficiency. So, coming back to uh, how to calculate this efficiency loss, uh, as we mentioned before, the reversible efficiency, which is developed in other parts of this course, is mainly due for thermodynamic reasons, and it's due to the difference between the enthalpy and the free energy of the different reactions. Yeah? We won't get much farther here because we've explained this in other courses. But apart from this loss of efficiency, we'll have to deal with other problems. Mm? The intensity that we will have on the fuel uh, on the fuel cell will not be exactly the same, and that corresponds to the uh, flow of fuel that we have at the entrance of the fuel cell. This will be mainly caused to technological features. In other terms, we won't be able to use all the fuel, all the hydrogen that we get in our fuel cell. Why not? Well, we'll see that in a couple of slides. Uh, let's have a look first and how uh, the intensity can be calculated in order to understand why we can obtain all the intensity. The intensity, and this is the current density, can be calculated by using this equation, which is um, implying the number of electrons of a reaction. In, in the, well, in this particular case, it would be two, two electrons in the oxidation of hydrogen. The Faraday's constant, F, and also the flow of reactants, which in, in international system will be moles per sec. Don't forget, international system. So, for a single cell, this will be the equation which gives you the intensity. Unfortunately, not, not all the hydrogen stream eh, will be used in a fuel cell. Part of it will be lost. And it's exactly the same for oxygen. Not all the oxygen that we obtained will be used in our fuel cell. Indeed, part of it will be lost. So we can define this new variable called utilization, which will be um, basically a yield, um, will be a ratio between the um, flow of hydrogen, which will be definitely used in your fuel cell, and the flow of hydrogen that we will be getting in our system. In other terms, this is the hydrogen, the hydrogen that you pay, and this is the hydrogen that you are using. So it's a very important variable. Let's talk about the loss of uh, potential now. Um, as we said before, there is a curve called polarization curve which relates us the number, um, the current density, I mean the amount of electrons flowing with the voltage of the cell. So this curve that you can see here is always uh, lower than the reversible potential, again because we are losing a lot of voltage in this case, and the difference between the ideal uh, potential and the real potential, which is the one you're going to get on your fuel cell, it's called overpotential. So, as you see, the, mm, well, the value of our potential will be varying depending on the place, well, on the current density that we're using. In other terms, this value will change depending on the position, and on the working uh, conditions of your fuel cell. So, you see here that if our potential increases with intensity, because yeah, you can see that this difference is getting bigger and bigger as we move through this axis, even though our potential moves through this, uh, in this direction and increases, we need to take into account that the power density, uh, the power that we're going to obtain, is a uh, product between the intensity and the voltage. So it will be very common to find a power curve like this one in this graph, 
with a maximum at some point. So if we want to obtain the maximum power of a fuel cell, we will need to get into this point, even though the overpotential is still very high. If we need to decrease the overpotential, we will have to move slightly to the left. This is slightly to lower intensities. Um, I just want to mention before I finish that there are three main causes for overpotential, I mean, three main causes for this decrease in the potential of a fuel cell. Activation polarization, opnic polarization and concentration polarization or activation over potential, omnic over potential and concentration over potential, they are completely synonyms. In other presentations we will um, study with further detail which are the chemical or physical uh, causes for the activation of this over potential. So that's all. Um, I'm still quite sad but I think if we work on well these over potentials and this utilization we try to improve our system I'm sure we will get to interesting points where our efficiency is not so bad so I think there's still time for hope for fuel cells thanks for your attention